All right, guys, section four, here we go. All right, this is um, always a fun lesson for me if we, when we were in class. Uh, so I'll try to make the best of it here um, online. All right, we'll do a little bit in class with this to, to have some fun with it, but let's, let's try this. So I want you to think about these three items that are pictured here. And they're not in front of you and they're not labeled with the corresponding numbers. But I want you to, if you go down to number one and number two there, I want you to think, what is the actual function of these items? All right, if you start from the top right down to the middle and then down to the bottom right, what is the actual function of these items? All right, which is different from number two. Number two is asking what meaning is attached to these objects, all right? And I want you to think about this because when we talk about this in class, uh, I want you to kind of share with me what it is that you thought of these as their function and then what you thought of it as their meaning right now. Okay. So the meaning behind these items. Now, as you guys take a look at those and think about that, <coughs> excuse me, I want to move on and look at what we're going to talk about here today. And, and that is material and non-material culture. So we've talked a lot about kind of like the behaviors, the norms, the behaviors within a culture. So let's talk about, well, it's going to be a little bit of both here too. So material culture being those that are tangible, and we'll talk about that in a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then non-material culture. Um, and I also want to take a look at how culture and the components of culture actually evolve. All right. If you go back to the to the slide before, there were a couple of pictures on there that um, they've changed. The phone has changed, and obviously the boom box has changed. All right, here we go. So let's talk about what is non-material and material culture. Non-material culture involves things like, think, it's non-material. It's not materialistic. It involves the beliefs, the ideas, and the knowledge within a culture. And our beliefs are our ideas about the nature of reality, all right? And what is so important about non-material culture is that people base their behavior on what they believe, all right? For example, if you believed back in 2012 that the world was going to end, all right, you probably would have made different decisions. People might think that now 2020, right? But in all seriousness, in 2012, you know, right, there's the conspiracy theory that the world was going to end. And there were people that really embodied this, all right? And they hunkered down. They built bunkers, okay, stacked it with canned foods, all right? So you're going to make different decisions. If you have a firm belief in religion, all right, and you actually embody those teachings, not just go on Sunday or whatever day it is that people go, <coughs> okay, then you're going to behave a certain way. Think about this, about our beliefs. If you have a, let's look, remember when the flag was up there? There are certain beliefs and ideas about the flag right now. All right. And people are going to behave differently when they see the flag or when the national anthem is played. All right. So these beliefs, these ideas and this knowledge behind it, okay, sometimes dictates our behavior. Now, material culture is the concrete, tangible objects of a culture. All right? They have no meaning besides what people give them. All right? So, in in class, and you guys come up here, I'm going to talk about non or sorry, material culture, and I'm going to I'm going to read you a story, and I want you to think about things like, what is what is the newspaper to you? All right, <clears throat> you and your generation. You probably haven't read the physical newspaper too much. I'm assuming you consume, and then even adults now too, they don't do it too much either. But a lot of your your older generation probably still get the newspaper because that's what they're used to. You guys consume your news through your phones, which is not abnormal. It's normal <coughs> and specific to, to you guys. All right, so let's talk about how these two are related. So if we look at how this works, the meaning of physical objects are based on beliefs, norms, 
and values of those who actually regard them. And the meanings of these change over time. And I'm going to give you several <clears throat> uh, examples when we get into class, but I want you to make, make note of the fact that there are things that obviously have evolved as we have progressed. And I'll give you the idea of the phone that's up there. So obviously the top one, an old rotary phone, um, what was the function of this? Obviously the function of this is to communicate with others. That was of this top one, right? The function right here of this phone was strictly to call and communicate with others. Uh, and it could be friendly, could be business, whatever it may be, all right? Now what's non-material culture of the phone, all right? Could be, think about the things that are attached to keeping up with family and love and and what that means for people. Uh, if, if it's for business and you're selling a product or, or you're, let's see, politically, right? You might get a, a call on the phone, um, somebody trying to promote a candidate, okay? So what that, what that top phone could strictly be used for. Now, the phone has changed and all of those things are still attached to the phone, but we've added some new elements as it's evolved over time. If you go to, I still have an old iPhone on there. I think that's like a, I don't know. You guys would know which one that is. Maybe not. Um, but, <clears throat> but it's so much more, right? It's still keeping in touch. And we also communicate with each other in so many different ways with that bottom phone. All right. Whether it be through, through different social networks, through, um, through text. Okay. So, so the evolution of the phone is, is one of the things in our society uh, that's rather remarkable and how it's evolved. We're going to talk about some other things in class, but that's a good example, especially when we talk about what your homework is for this. And I'm going to skip this slide because um, we'll talk about that in class. And I want to talk about what is ideal and what is real culture. Ideal culture is, have you ever heard somebody say, well, that's ideal. It's the guidelines. It's the cultural guidelines that group members claim to accept. And it's not that we don't accept it, but we claim to, everybody claims to accept the idea of honesty. I don't think anybody walks around saying, I tell lies, that's what I do, and that's who I am. Because they know that they couldn't be trusted. They probably wouldn't have many friends, and it'd be hard to, you know, get a job. It'd be hard to, you know, have friends, all of those things. Um, but we do know that <clears throat> as a society, we, I, it's ideal. Honesty is, is ideal. But is everyone always honest? And that's when we transfer to the bottom part of real culture. Um, it's the actual behavior patterns of members of a group, okay? If nobody would cheat on taxes if everyone was honest, all right? And the cheating on taxes goes from the, from the top to the bottom, right? Those that are multimillionaires cheat on taxes. Those that don't pay any taxes cheat on taxes as we don't claim certain things. And so a lot of people are, are, are cheating sometimes the system that is set up. And sometimes the system itself, if you're talking about taxes, allows for cheating too but that's for a different conversation. So, but, but what is ideal and what is real? Let's, let's move beyond taxes. Just, I mean, have, how many of you have told a lie? I'm going to assume everybody that's listening to this right now at some point in time has probably told a lie. All right. I can't think of the, the last lie I told, not saying I don't lie, but I'm saying that, that I've lied in my past too, probably to get myself out of things, or maybe I haven't lied, but you know, you twist up uh, the story a little bit. Um, and, and then you, then you realize, I think as I progress that, Lying gets you absolutely nowhere most of the time, all right? Uh, most of the time. But why, let's look at this. If, if the difference between ideal and real, we know that we have all these ideals in our, in our culture that we follow <clears throat> or we try to follow, does this make ideal culture meaningless? No, all right? And this is why, and I've, said, I've stated this before in, in class and in another lecture is, it provides for high standards. Most people try to reach the cultural ideals, which is a good thing. We want people to strive for honesty. We want people to strive for integrity and to love one another. All of that stuff, okay, is stuff that we want people to try to reach. Um, and here's the thing, too, about this is that when people drift too far from the ideal culture, we, we sometimes try to reel them in. All right. And parenting, that's a big thing about parenting. Like when I see my child drifting and and like he, there was a period, there's like a two week period where I saw him kind of like testing the boundaries with his lies. And my wife was like, what is going on here? And I'm like, this this is him 
this is him trying to figure out what can I get away with. And so you stay strong as a parent and you, and you teach them how and, and why lying is wrong and why you won't be trusted anymore. All right. He's already been given the story about, you know, the boy who cries wolf. We're like, hey, bud, you know, we're going to stop believing you if you continue to do this. OK. And then when something actually happens, nobody's going to be there for you. And and that kind of stuff sinks in um, and kind of like I said, we reel people back in hard work, too. Right. If you get if you can't find a job because you have a terrible resume because you couldn't keep a job, you don't work hard, you've been fired, you know, at some point in time, it's got to click for you. You got to be a hard worker, or else you're going to be floating around having minuscule jobs probably the majority of your life. All right. Because hard work at the end of the day, hopefully, would pay off for most, not always, but for most of the time, if you work your tail off, all right, good things will, will probably happen. Um, so that's why those things become incredibly important. So let me go to what your guys' assignment is going to be for this section. It's not that bad of a assignment. I think you'll enjoy this one. Well, you might not enjoy it, but it, but it's not it's not something you're going to be racking your brain over. Uh, but I want you to think about three materials you use every day. All right, no phones. Those are out. No phones. I already kind of talked about those. That's why I'm ruling it out. Uh, hopefully, you guys use more than just your phone every day. I know it's probably what consumes you the most. Uh, me too. Like I'm not I'm not bashing you guys. All right, but I'm just letting you know. I know that you use them quite a bit. Uh, so do I. So, but there's three things you need to do. All right. Or actually four. First, you need to tell me what is the function of the item? And that goes back to the beginning. What does it do? What does it actually do? All right. Now, has it changed over the years? And for some of you, I mean, if you don't know the history of the item you do, then, you know, look it up maybe a little bit. All right. You might actually have some fun with this. I know I had somebody do a toothbrush before. Um, I've had several do a toothbrush before and they, they found it interesting of what a toothbrush looked like back in the day, what it is now. And you can just think about how a toothbrush is, you know, you know, with a battery in it. All right. So there's there's multiple uses. OK, for for the toothbrush. What is the non-material culture surrounding the item? All right. Talk about this with the phone. Right. Communication. That's the idea of, of keeping up communication with it, like those types of things. What is that non-material culture? that surrounds this item. And then how might someone other than you view this item? Now, this is going to be the trickier part because we haven't talked about this too much. Okay. But we always see things through our own lens. And I told you we, uh, we want to start to see things through the lens of other people. Now, a toothbrush, that might be a little bit different. Maybe not, though, because I know people use toothbrushes to beyond just brushing their teeth. All right. I know some people use toothbrushes for different things with their hair. All right. So so there are other different different ways that ages will view it. OK, how does a think of let's go back to the phone. How would somebody that's older view a new smartphone? We you know like they, they typically they probably just want an old flip phone and some of them still have that. All right. Uh, and then also another way to look at this, how might different races view this? OK, uh, because like I said, they might have different uses for it or maybe uh, historically what, what's the history behind this item? Um, so, so it's just something to ponder and think about as you think from a different perspective. To show you real quick what's going to be attached, if, if some of you actually view the video first, I'll show you real quick what this is. Okay, you're going to do three items, if you remember. All right, and they all look like this. So you put the item in here. What's the function? How it's changed over time? the non-material culture surrounding the item, and how might someone other than you view this item? All right. So uh, I'm posting this today, Wednesday. Um, it's not actually Wednesday, but I'm posting this today on Wednesday. And this is due on Sunday. So you have some time here. OK. And then those of you that are returning, we only have next week. Uh, those of you that are Friday students, obviously, I don't get to talk to you so much about this. Uh, but we will talk about it early next week, and I'm going to hold off with the uh, the Thursday group a little bit too. So enjoy your weekend, and uh, see you.